How's it going guys? Welcome to another video of Elsim Gaming. In this video, I'll be telling you 10 Elder Ring tips to help you survive in the game. Elder Ring is a tough game, but these 10 tips can help you play it better and make you have more fun through your gameplay. After a wait of 3 years, the announcement of Elder Ring is finally here and it is just difficult as the games that inspired it. Elden Ring is developed by Japanese company From Software. They have already have gave us Demon's Souls, Bloodborne and Dark Souls series. Like those titles, Elder Ring requires precision, accuracy, creativity to rule the game. Before we move further into the video, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Here is the 10 best tips. Number 1. Don't start with Wretch unless you really want to. Elder Ring offers 10 different starting classes. 9 of them are excellent choices for any kind of player, from the hardy vagabond to wise astrologer to versatile confessor. However, there is one class that inexperienced players should avoid, particularly if it is your first from software title. The red starts with minimal stats, a weak wooden club, and absolutely nothing else even the director of Elden Ring specifically recommended against this class for most Elden Ring players. Number 2. Meet Melina as soon as you can. After Elden Ring's brief tutorial, you set off into the open world of the lands between. The entire Limgrave region is yours to explore as you please. However, no matter how many enemies you defeat, how much gear you find, or how many optional dungeons you explore, there's little you can do with the valuable runes you acquire as you go. You'll want to find Melina, an NPC or non playable character who vows to accompany you as your maiden and channel your runes into valuable attributes increases. Melina isn't hard to find. Simply follow the trails of the light from the first two sides of Lost Grace that you find and try not to die in route. Once you team up with Melina, you can go back and explore Limgrave to your heart's content. Number 3. Use a shield in moderation. Shields are one of the most valuable tools you can find in the Soulsborne game. They're also a trap. That's because while shields can block a ton of damage and save you from deaths, staying on the defensive is a great way to get killed particularly during boss fights. However, as with most other systems in Elder Ring, there's a way to strike a happy medium with shields. First find a light based shield that can block 100% of physical damage. This is the most common type of attack you'll encounter. Then get used to exploring with your shield up, which will save you from a lot of surprise attacks during tough fights. However, learn when to keep your shield up and when to dodge, especially if you can dodge towards the enemy rather than away from it. Number 4. Explore on horseback. Elder Ring gives you a summonable steed called Torrent and you'll need to make use while Torrent's primary purpose is to help you explore, he's also an excellent companion for battles. While mounted combat is a bit imprecise, enemies will be very often to hit Torrent instead of you, giving you greater survivability. Furthermore, Torrent can outrun just about any opponent in the game and including ferocious gigantic bosses. There's no shame in leaving the fight to another day. Number 5. Work toward Margaret the Fell Omen. While you can explore Limgrave region for long as you can, it's relatively difficult to leave unless you fight the game's first major boss, Margit, the Fell Omen. Margit is a tough foe as he wields a variety of weapons, strings together unbreakable combos and doesn't seem to take a lot of damage. However, Margit is indeed fallible as long as you have a little preparation and lucky on your side. You'll fight Margit as you enter Stormvale Castle and after a few tries, you should have a pretty good idea of whether or not you can beat him. The real challenge is that last third of the fight when he attacks get much faster and harder to block. If you can't head back out into the Limgrave and hunt down optional dungeons and upgrades until you are ready to try again, it's a good test. If you can beat Margit, you can beat the whole game. Number 6. Visit and Revisit Roundtable Hold As you get to know Melina better, she'll eventually invite you to Roundtable Hold, a distant respite where tarnished adventurers can rest and collaborate. Roundtable Hold is an incredible place to build up your character as you meet blacksmith, a spirit tuner for summonable creatures, a priest, a sorcerer and more. Number 7. Fight Giants for Fun and Profit Compared to Soulsborne games, Elder Ring is a bit stingy with its all-purpose currency. If you die twice in a row, you'll be in a lot of trouble since grinding out thousands of runes required for each attribute increase can take a long time. 
to expedite the process. However, there is an area early in the game that gives you at least 5000 runes per run. It's a little difficult though. If you can, if you travel southeast of Warm Master's shack in Central Limgrave, you'll find 5 giants called Troll Warriors, each of whom drops 1000 runes on defeat. They're tough enemies, particularly early game, but if you fight them on the horseback, they're much simpler and they'll get a little easier each time you level up. Number 8. Spend your runes frequently. It's relatively difficult to hold onto runes in Elden Ring. If you die once, you have to track back to where you met your demise, and you can retrieve them. If you die twice in a row, however, they're gone forever, and you'd better hope there's a good spot nearby to start grinding. The best way to ensure you don't lose runes is simply to spend them whenever you can. Attributes increases are the safest, best for runes, but if you don't have enough for a costly level up, you can also buy equipment or upgrade existing gear. Whatever you do, don't walk around with thousands of runes unless you absolutely have to. You may not get to keep them. Number 9. Heal early, heal often. Eldering lets you carry and upgrade Crimson Flasks, which restores a good chunk of your health each time you drink one. It may seem like a smart idea to save your Crimson Flasks until you really need them, but this strategy will get you killed as often as not. That's because enemies in Elden Ring hit hard and fast, and healing takes precious seconds that you may not have. As such, it's best to keep your health topped up even if you're not at death's door. Anytime your health drops about 50% or so, it's worth healing. And if you are in an area with tough foes, which is most areas, you may want to start quaffing once you hit 75% or so. You're much better off surviving with a silver of health than dying with an inventory full of flasks. The last but not the least, number 10. Feel free to come back later. One of the beautiful things about Elden Ring is that there are very few bottlenecks in the game. I can count on one hand the number of times the game requires you to go to a specific place and beat a specific boss before you can progress. If you are having trouble with a particular section of enemy, you can always hop on torrent and seek out a new area. You'll almost certainly find some helpful new equipment or an optional dungeon that offers some much needed runes. The downside, of course, is that the next area you explore might be even more difficult than the one you left. It's also sometimes difficult to tell whether an area is beyond your current abilities or simply requires a different strategy, but it's better than crashing headfirst into an unbeatable fight for hours on the end. So that was today's video, hope you'll find it helpful and makes you play Elden Ring more and more and helps you how to get to the end of the game. Hope you like it. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Till then, happy gaming.